Good morning, folks. Number of important items to hit in space today, including the Nova topic. You should notice the bright points incoming here on the northeastern limb of our star. We'll get to that in a moment, but first a sad announcement. We are not going to be allowed to do Observing the Frontier 2020. While many states have opened enough to allow gatherings, Colorado has not. At 20% capacity with masks and social distancing, we cannot reach an acceptable position by August in this state, and we will be refunding everyone's registration. You need to handle your hotel and flight reservations if you have them, and since we can't just hit a magic button and refund 600 of you all at once, please allow us two weeks to manually refund each registration. Thank you for both your support and your patience. Okay, now... Let's make up for that sadness at spaceweathernews.com and begin with the last 24 hours on our star. It will take those bright active regions another few days to get into position, but this morning, plasma filaments are getting active. One actually shifts out over the brightest point there, the dark, shadowy filament going over top of it. It and the high activity at the limb afterwards are suggestive that another solar uptick will begin to build over the following two to three weeks, just in time for the major planetary geometries of next month. We're going to do a quick check here on the solar wind. All is calm here, and likewise, we are all in the green geomagnetically. The top geophysical event of the last day was a 7.4 earthquake that luckily struck well offshore in the ocean. We had been targeting this region based on both blood echoes and atmospheric pressure in the alert map posted the night before on the Disaster Prediction app. And truth be told, it's much easier to feel good about these ocean hits than when we forecast one that takes lives. Speaking of which, disaster struck the coast of the Ivory Coast after heavy rainfall triggered a landslide that killed at least 13 people and numerous animals. Similar scene playing out in the valleys of southern China as a natural dam couldn't handle the rainfall tore through two villages set in the depths of the waterway. No word on total damage or deaths there. Let's go to space and start aesthetically with Hubble so these pretty panchromatic nova images can ease our brains into readiness for some serious space science. Amazingly, nobody had ever used the full Hubble panchromatic capabilities to look at these NOVA events. They are incredible. Quick stop back at the alien topic because, well, it feels like we're being mentally groomed to expect it. They are determining that a phenomenal amount of the billions of worlds out there actually have oceans and major geological activity that can support life cycles. Folks, this is 100% our 2013 star water hypothesis, and it's a very happy day for the most veteran of observers who know the power of water production in the universe. Folks, I was hoping the net would get this paper and not flip out. So far, it's just been quanta that did it. But basically, an unexplained electronic recoil occurred at the Xenon 1T, and they are excited that it might be dark matter. They have already ruled out WIMPs, but haven't ruled out solar axions, which we do not favor, but at least those have electric charge, which is a start. But their neutrino magnetic moment possibility as an explanation is a little bit better. But best of all is their recognition that the tank could be contaminated, which they did not consider before, which would completely explain the results, and which cuts down their significance by orders of magnitude. And get this, they can't even determine if there is tritium contamination, and claim there will be no way to do so. So long-standing mainstream belief is that it's impossible to model supernova in a lab, and these guys were like, hold my drink. After over a year of tweaking and eliminating false signals and experiment deficiencies, they have recreated the first moments of a nova event in super slow motion. Ever wonder what the shell release looks like? You've got the smaller cosmic rays blasting out first. Here, particleized plasma gas takes its place, and it's followed by the Raleigh-Taylor instability of the blasting outward. Gorgeous. Well done. Up next, we've got a different kind of stellar eruption, a major flare from a distant star that was so powerful Chandra picked it up in x-rays and was able to observe the long-duration event to determine they witnessed it through a dusty torus around the star. And perhaps most importantly, they recognized the nuclear reactive power of these flares, suggesting that even our sun may have used solar flares to make some of the elements of our solar system previously thought to be from other sources or previous nova. Nope, the sun can do it too. 
And this brings us to an excellent piece posted to Archive last night that reviews the recurrence of Nova events. Yes, they believe even classical Nova recur on the scale of thousands of years, which is far less often than the hundred-year repeaters we recognize as rapidly recurrent Nova. And the truth is that all their mechanisms and circumstance dictate that our Sun is likely an ultra-long period recurrent micronova, likely more than on a 10,000-year cycle, triggered as our heliospheric bubble encounters different environments through the dust, gas, plasma, and interstellar magnetic fields of the galaxy. We greatly appreciate your support. Every day, questions come on the micronova topic, the magnetic reversal, Earth's catastrophe cycle, and every day, they can be answered with the Cosmic Disaster playlist from 2019 and 2020, listed right below the video. We've got your wind map forecasts and shots of our star to close, and of course, we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 5 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.